why join Palantir's advisory board? And perhaps most importantly, why now? Yeah, thanks, Judy. Well, one, I, I used, my guys used uh, Palantir both in Iraq and Afghanistan. And frankly, watching it, uh, watching how the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines used it for everything from, from taking a look at uh, predictive analysis on the threat from the enemy to being able to kind of visualize some of our toughest uh, problems, threat problems out there, really uh, made me a fan of the Palantir platform. And then, of course, I, I have watched them over the last uh, several years as they have gone from private to, to the it's IPO. It's incredible what Palantir and, uh, is doing. And frankly, it Absolutely is their involvement incredible. with particularly the Department of Defense and the broader federal government uh, that I have always admired. I, I've liked the culture of the, uh, of the company. And frankly, when I was asked to, to join the Federal Advisory Board, uh, it didn't take me long to, to say yes. You've seen both sides of things from your time at the Secretary of Defense's office to the work you do now in private industry. Um, we Palantir uh, and also we, the national security agencies, right, I speak in my former role, are committed to keeping the United States technologically superior. Palantir provides cutting edge technology to the United States Armed Services, and our allies. And look, here's the thing, in an era of rapidly evolving threats and geopolitical complexity, I think which we probably in the early years of this century would not have quite expected it to look and as it does. specifically what's going on in Israel Decision makers and, and Iran war right fighters have got to have software capabilities that can only come from the per commercial marketplace. And Palantir is thrilled to be a part of that community. That was absolutely mind blowing. Hey guys, Corey here, welcome back. Today we're discussing Palantir yet again. And not only did I invest $20,000 into Palantir, but today I wanna show you how you can hedge your risk and to help you mitigate risk because Palantir did reach $27 high very recently. And if you bought at the peak of that time, then you are definitely out money. Even if you purchase Palantir at the price it's currently at right now, you may end up incurring some losses because of the Israel-Iranian conflict going on. The price of Palantir could come down a little bit more. Now, I don't think Palantir is going to drop much more. It could stretch into the $17 or $18 range, but I don't see that happening too quickly. And if it does, it will most likely rebound pretty quick on a very good earnings report. I just want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just showing you strategies in the market, technicals, fundamentals, as well as finance financials to understanding trading better. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide which stocks to put your money into and how much of a position size you would like to have. Look, guys, I told myself when I had financial freedom after years of struggling in a divorce, I have two kids. It was pretty brutal going through college and spending years upon years trying to become profitable in the markets and learning strategies that worked. I told myself that if I became profitable, had financial freedom and was able to build a good life for myself, that I would help others achieve achieve the same success. I have achieved financial freedom over the last several years and I've achieved most of my goals. I don't have to worry about money. I only work about an hour a day and I'm able to do all the things I ever wanted to do. And I want to show you guys how you can achieve the same thing. I want to show you guys my system that works. I want to help you guys out the best that I can, which is why I make these videos. I'm very passionate about investing, the stock market, financials, just overall the world of business and finance. However, I'm even more passionate about teaching. I have a bachelor's degree in finance and I'm currently in 1L Law School for my Juris Doctorate. So I spend a lot of time studying the world of finance and now I'm gonna be studying the legal side of it. So I wanna try to help guide you guys on how to read technicals and fundamentals and how to improve your portfolio. All right, so let's dive right into Palantir. And like I've said before, and I just showed you on the intro that Palantir works with the US government, CIA, FBI, local and state police and multiple government agencies, the military for intelligence overseas, all kinds of stuff. And I've discussed a lot of the details in my previous video, which I'll put right there on the screen. Don't miss out on that one. And I just want to point out something that you guys may not be aware of, and that is Palantir is responsible for the capture of bin Laden. That shows you how good Palantir is. We spent like 10 years trying to catch him. and Palantir did it rather quickly. So let's go ahead and look at the technicals and the fundamentals. We can see that Palantir Palantir is below the 10-day moving average and the 20-day moving average. The 10-day crossed over back on March 24th, crossed over 
and below the 20 day moving average showing that we have a downtrend coming. But not only that, right around the same time, the 10 and the 20 day moving average fell below the 100 day moving average, which is uh, not a very good sign at all. If we notice the previous earnings on the 5th of February of this year, the price was right around $16 and it skyrocketed all the way up to around 25, came back down with a pullback, came up another pullback and then jumped right up to $27. If we look at this trend and we see the 100 day moving average coming down, we can draw a line and we can see that with this line coming down right about here, this average is going to come down and the crossover point is going to be somewhere in here. If I could say where I believe the bottom to balance here is right now based off this 100 day moving average and the 10 and the 20, I believe we're going to have a crossover somewhere around here and the 100 day is going to come down around here and we're going to break above the 20 day and then cross over the 100 day somewhere in here. And if you notice that coincides perfectly with earnings. All right. So if we look at this, we're going to see a crossover happen somewhere around here, maybe. And then you'll see the 100 day moving average is going to come down like this, something similar to that. And then the price will reject a little bit, come back down right around earnings and then up. And that's where the crossover is going to happen. So when this comes down, it's going to bounce somewhere in this area, somewhere between 1875 and 1985, somewhere just above or below the $20 range, maybe like mid to high 19s. If Palantir drops in the next week to around $19.30. That's a buy opportunity right here because Palantir is going to go up after earnings. There's no doubt about that. And with Israel and Iran having these tensions and a possible regional war, this is only going to increase the value of the tech sector in the defense area like Palantir and their AI. It's only going to go up. If there's a war or a potential war of any magnitude in the Middle East, stocks like Palantir will go up or they will hold. If we notice all of the other stocks in the market that have dropped or leveled off during the pullback and the fear that's going on because of the tensions in the Middle East, you'll notice that Palantir didn't drop very much, only about a dollar, which is not a lot considering stocks like Lyft, Uber, and Robinhood and other stocks have dropped several dollars. So Palantir is holding very strong, and that's mainly because of its core fundamentals, the sector that it's in, and because of the Israel and Iran conflict and the fact that this is a defense AI stock. Now, I already did this in a previous video. However, looking at the financials of Palantir, we can see total revenue went from 473 million up to 608 million, showing an increase in total revenue, gross profit from 370 million all the way up to just right about 500 million. So that's $130 million in increased gross profit, showing yet again, year over year, Palantir is increasing their profits and their revenue. Operating income started $41 million in the hole. However, now up to $65 million in the positive. Pre-tax income started in the negative, negative $176 million. Now they're up to $106 million. So we can see this pattern that Palantir is showing us on this financial journey is they're becoming more and more profitable year over year. Their total net income after taxes, we can see from negative $179 million all the way up to $93 million. They are profitable. We look at the EBITDA, which is a very important metric, negative $36 million all the way to $73 million. As we can see with the EBITDA, of 73 million, it lines up perfectly with everything else showing that Palantir is profitable. However, I want to take a look at my favorite metric, which is cash flow. It is much better metric to look at. And unlike net income or pre-tax income, a really good accountant or CPA could fudge with those numbers through depreciation, uh, devaluations, write-offs. You could pretty much make yourself look like you're making more than you really are or losing less than you really are. It can be done. Companies have done it many times and it's going on all the time in the market. I'm not saying that Palantir is doing that. However, what I am saying is nothing is a better metric than cash flow. So let's go over to the cash flow. Look at cash from operating activities started out at 62 million all the way up to $301 million. Cash from investing activities, 5 million to negative 569 million. So that is not the greatest news. However, cash from financing activities went from 20 million to 50 million. So that's a good thing. But the most important metric overall, once you take into account financing, investing, cash from operations, all that stuff combined, your free cash flow is the ultimate metric to look at when you want to see the whole and total complete picture. And it started out at 56 million and now we're all the way up to almost 300 million. So looking at the cash flow, looking at the EBITDA and looking at gross revenue and profits as well as pre-tax and net income, Palantir is profitable. If we look at their EPS, they have an EPS of 8 cents per share and this upcoming earnings
earnings is supposed to be at eight cents a share as well, meaning they are profitable. However, a really good price to earnings ratio for a stock would be somewhere between 20 and 30. That is the golden area to be in. And what I mean by that is the cost of the shares versus how much their earnings are. We can figure this out by taking the EPS and dividing it into the cost of the share price. Let me show you how to do that. So we got our calculator open right here. The cost of Palantir is $20.47. We're going to divide that by the EPS of $0.08, cents, which we can see right here, divided by 0 0.08. We have a PE ratio of 255. However, because their earnings year over year are growing, I anticipate this quarter that they're going to report somewhere between 9 and $0.12 cents a share. And by the end of this year, I would anticipate that they keep in line with how they have been over the past few years. Palantir will likely reach 20 to 25 cents a share by the end of the year or going into next year. And if that was to happen, although I think the share price is going to be a lot higher next year than it is right now, probably more like $30. But at the current stock price of 2047, if they even hit 20 cents a share, it would be 102. That would be pretty decent. That would be really good, actually. If they did better, I think they really need more like 30 cents a share. That's not happening anytime soon, although I could be wrong. It could happen quickly with the regional tensions in Israel and Iran. But at 2047, if they had an EPS of, let's say, 30 cents, that would put them at 68. Just to give you guys an understanding, American Airlines EPS was actually 29 cents and their stock price hovers around $14. $14 divided by 29 cents gives American Airlines a PE ratio of 48, which is really decent. Ford stock is very strong. I know this video is not about Ford, but I'm just giving you an example of how PE ratios work in comparison. We can see the stock price is $12.14. Ford's EPS earnings were 29 cents a share previously. So we divide 12.17 by 29 cents. PE ratio 41, which is very, very good. Not elite level or great, but very good. And if we go previously, Ford was around 72 cents last summer. So if we can get back to around 40 cents, we take 12.17 and we divide that by, let's just say 40 cents, we get back there. PE ratio of 30. So Ford's not too far off. They're in a little bit of a slump, but that just gives you a little bit of an idea of how PE ratio works. And when you look at Palantir, we need a stronger EPS. Palantir really needs to get up around 25, 30 cents per share. Like that's where we need to be. So let me show you how you can hedge your risk with an advanced strategy in case that happens. And let me show you some other strategies, how you can make some money consistently on Palantir right now. Now, if you already own Palantir, regardless of when you got in or what your average cost is, I would dollar cost average. So if your average cost is $24 and you got in when it was high, you can buy some more shares around $18 or $19 when it hits a bottom right before earnings. If you have 100 shares at 25 and you buy 100 shares at 20, that gives you an average between the 200 shares of $22.50. When you buy shares at a cheaper price, it helps you offset loss because when the stock price goes up, all the profits that you're generating when you bought low are offsetting the losses on the shares that you bought higher. So if you bought 100 shares of Palantir at $25 and now you buy another 100 shares at $20, your average cost, like I said, is $22.50, meaning your break even is now $22.50 instead of $25. And the reason for this is you did lose $500 on your first 100 shares. However, on the second set of shares that you purchased at $20 reaches $22.50, you've now made $250, but you're out $250 on the original 100 shares at $25 which means it's a break even. And then as the price goes above $22.50, both sets of shares, all 200 are now making money and you're growing your portfolio more rapidly. That's dollar cost averaging. That will really greatly help you in your portfolio. So now if you also hold Palantir and you want to sell covered calls, you're going to click on sell calls. We'll go out one week. I love selling weekly options. There's a little bit more liquidity and a little bit more value in them because they decay faster. You make a little more money when you go one to two weeks out versus three or four weeks out. So we're going to click on sell $21 call because it's unlikely for Palantir to jump a dollar or dollar fifty in the same week. But we can always roll out and up. If you guys want to go safer, you could sell a $21.50 call, although you're only going to get $7. We'll click on this one. We're going to collect a juicy premium of $29. Now, you won't be able to do this every week per se. Some weeks you'll get $10. Some weeks you'll get $20 to $25. I've noticed with Palantir, the average is around $20 to $24 per week on covered calls. So let's bust out the calculator, show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's just say $24 a week times four weeks, $96 a month. In 10 months, you could generate $960 on 100 shares. In reality, that's almost half 
of the cost of the shares. If you got in at $25, you just made back a third of your cost just in covered calls. This helps offset the losses you may have incurred by buying too high. However, if you dollar cost average and sell covered calls, you can see how you can lower your cost. If you purchased 100 shares at $25 and now you purchased another 100 shares at $20 and you're selling covered calls, you can see how this pretty much offsets most, if not all of your losses. In one month, we can collect $96 plus we dollar cost averaged. So our break even now is $22.50 minus $96. Our break even is $21.50. So we're only out $100 or $120 right now instead of being out $400 plus. You see how dollar cost averaging and selling covered calls can really help you out? Let me show you the ultimate advanced strategy on securing your shares. And it's what I like to call the insurance policy. You have insurance on dental, you have insurance on health, renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, and auto insurance. Why don't you insure your financial investments? Let me show you exactly how to do that. What you're going to do is click on buy. You're going to click on put, and we're going to go out for a leap to January 2025. Now, remember, buying options as the buyer, you have the right to exercise, meaning if you buy a call, you have the right to buy the shares at the selected strike price that you choose. And if you buy a put, you as the buyer have the right to sell your shares and put them on the seller at the strike price you choose. So let's say you purchase Palantir for $20 and you don't want to lose much money. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and buy a $17 put option one year out. We're going to click on this. We're going to take a look at it. We're going to see that the overall cost is looking like we'll probably get filled for $2.10, which is $210. And we can see the Delta is 24, meaning there's only a 24% chance by the time this option expires that the stock price will be below our strike price of the put. This is just an insurance policy. And looking at the theta, we can see that. Let's look at the theta of this option. It's a half a cent a day. We're insuring our shares for half a cent a day. Where this is good is if Palantir drops the $10, you would lose $1,000. However, with this put option, you can sell your shares at $17 and only lose $300 plus the $200 it costs you. So you're out $500 instead of $1,000. However, if Palantir stays at $20 and starts to rebound and come up with good earnings and you realize, okay, Palantir's not going down, you can just sell this put option because it's a leap option and it's not losing much on theta at all. Let's say Palantir was to go up $2 and you decided you don't want this insurance anymore. You could sell it because the Delta is 24. Every dollar that Palantir moves, this option will change by $24. $1 times 100 shares, $100. So this option changes by $24. And the gamma is 0.3, meaning every dollar that Palantir changes, the Delta will change by 0.03. So after the first dollar, this Delta will go to 27. That means if Palantir was to go up by $2, we would see a price change in the option 24 plus 27 by $51. We could sell this option for $159. We would only lose $51. So realistically, we would buy this option and as soon as Palantir reaches 21, it could take six months. It could take three months. It could take a couple of days. We don't know, but we wait. And as soon as that happens and Palantir hits 21 or 22, it's time to sell this put option and we're only losing $51. So worst case scenario, we only are risking $51 to protect $1,000 in possible loss or $500 in possible loss. So as long as you set aside this rule that when Palantir gets to $22 and it looks like it's going up, we sell the put option. We're only out around $50. So if the stock price of Palantir goes to $16 or $15, we just hold the put because as your shares go down in value, the put goes up and it offsets. So what we do is we just keep holding on to the put. We're only going to do one of two things with this put option. One, exercise it. Two, sell it. We will sell it when Palantir gets to $22 or we will exercise it if Palantir gets to $12 or lower because when that happens, we are now losing only $300 instead of $1,000. This is insurance on 100 shares. So you can see all the options to protect your portfolio and how to mitigate losses and hedge your position with Palantir. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you know when I post new videos. And remember, until the next video, let's grow our wealth together. Take care, guys.